Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. Join us as we check out Barry McElwain's Dick Johnson Grand Prix Turbo Falcon, his XE351 four-speed ESP that was once Dick Johnson's personal road car, and then we take this super rare Grand Prix Turbo for a drive. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content coming your way. Barry, I believe we're standing next to a very rare car right here. Yeah, Glenn, this is a very, very rare car. This is what's called a Dick Johnson Grand Prix Turbo. They were built by Country Dealer Team with Dick Johnson's blessing and signature uh, back in at the end of 1982 into 83. We know at this stage of 43 of them. They're all build numbered. Um, and I actually know of car number 43 and I've never seen a higher build number. They canned the V8, didn't they, and went to the six cylinder only, at deeming a need for such a car. Yeah, correct. You know, uh, September, October, basically in 82, or November was the last one, was the last of the Cleveland V8s. Ford had made the decision that they weren't going to build V8 cars here in Australia anymore. Uh, so this was uh, where this one came from. And obviously quite a bit of history with the build on this car too. Yeah, look, there's a fair bit of history with the build on these. They were actually predominantly built in Bayswater to start with. They took the six cylinder 4.1 litre engine, put the turbocharger on the side of it. Traditionally, they were all built with a carburetor. This particular car uh, did its first 16,000 kilometres with its first owner. Then it was sold to Queensland and it had a, a fuel injection system fitted to it there. And it's only got 20,000 kilometres on it now. 20,000 kilometres? 20,000 original <laughs> kilometres. Where do you find such a car? They're not easy to find. And when I saw it, I actually jumped on it straight away and uh, got right into it. And I believe this isn't the only one you've got. I've actually got three of these. So I'd actually brought two others before this one. Uh, and then I found this one. So this one will be a keeper and the other two will at some stage probably find themselves new homes with new owners. I would imagine performance would be pretty serious too. The performance on these is absolutely fantastic. You know, they realistically had better performance back in the day than the 351s did. The 351s obviously being factory, had all the pollution gear and all of the above on it. These, uh, these really do fly. The guys here with Country Dealer Team and Dick Johnson put some anger back into these Falcons. Well, they're a real workhorse engine, these 250 cross flows, and with turbocharging on them and that long stroke, it just brings them to life. It does bring them to life. People don't understand the torque that these 4.1 engines have. You know, they quite often fitted them to the F350s, um, and they used to tie around four tonne on the back of F350s with them. So they're a really good, strong engine. And the car looks very original too throughout. This car is absolutely original. This is its original paint, original trim, carpet. All of its original glass is still retained on the vehicle. Uh, this car was actually ordered by the original owner with new wheels on it. The Grand Prix turbos traditionally had an Anki wheel, which was sourced by Jim Fenico to put on them. Uh, but this guy here, he really liked these new wheels. I really quite like them as well. Uh, they certainly look as good as the Yankees on the car. Oh, they look absolutely sensational. And the flares, everything just sort of suits it, doesn't it? it yeah, fits just it's, right. it's just right. It's, you know, it's not too over the top, um, but it you know, certainly says, hey, look at me, I've got something under the bonnet here. It's almost got that Group C body kit look about it, it hasn't does. it? It does. It's sort of got that real Group C feel about it. So I think that's what Dick was looking for when they were designing them. What a spectacular car. No, thanks, Glenn. It's a beautiful example. Coming up, we're driving this super rare Dick Johnson Grand Prix Turbo, this XE Falcon. Well, Glenn, this is a 351 four speed XE ESP, obviously based off the Fairmont gear. This particular car was uh, owned by Dick Johnson uh, late in 82. It was his own personal car. Wow. And it has amazing performance, got a beautiful sound to it. I mean, Dick is an amazing guy, really. He and his brother put a lot of work into their race cars over the years, building it at yeah. home in the shed. The real story of a typical battler. An absolute typical battler, yeah. Yes. And this is just a fantastic car, and I certainly love the little modifications that he did make to it. I was actually lucky enough four or five years ago to have Dick actually signed the car. Well, he and Stephen actually signed the car uh, for me and verified what it was. Um, and I asked Dick why it performed so well. And he said it, uh, it's all in the heads. Being a, uh, an absolute Cleveland guru, I suppose he couldn't help himself. <laughs> One of the things you notice is he's actually drilled some holes in the back of the air cleaner and all of those sorts of things. So they, it got in, the boys obviously couldn't help but play with it. Some stealthy mods. That's exactly <laughs> it. So effectively it was their family car. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was his family car for a little while, so he'd had a couple of others before it, but that was certainly one of the last ones that he had. We're driving this super rare Dick Johnson Grand Prix Turbo, this XE Falcon. What a very interesting part of six-cylinder Falcon history in Australia. 
What was Dick Johnson's involvement? Did he want a bit of the lucrative special vehicles market? Or was he actually prepping a car to race? Because in 1985, the Group A category, the new category of racing, was going to take over. And you had to have a minimum of 500 factory production cars to be able to run. Now in the Group C period, where Dick was running his True Blue and Green's Tough cars, things were different. There was a lot more flexibility and freedoms then. Group A was going to be entirely different. And when Ford Australia chopped the V8, what was going to happen? What was Dick going to race? So, I reckon this is what was going on. Of course he wanted to race a Falcon and take on the world in the Group A racing category. Sadly, it never happened. And then he ended up racing the Mustang and then moving forward to the RS500 Cosworth Sierra. But can you just imagine it? Turbocharged six-cylinder Falcons back in the day, taking on the world and giving them hell. That would have been absolutely epic. It's really, really sad that that didn't happen. When you think about it, they did an amazing job back in the early 80s on this 250 cross-flow six-cylinder engine. You've got to remember they didn't quite have the technology that we have available to us today when it came to engine management systems. So they had to do a lot of work to make sure these things were going to be not only drivable, but also reliable. Now the stock standard EFI 250 six cylinder engine made about 150 horsepower. She was no fire breather. They did a quarter mile in around about a 16.9 and they did a 0 to 100 in about 9.8 seconds. They were a really good workhorse, a stump puller. They had a long stroke and a small bore, so inherently they weren't really a racing engine at all. But put a turbocharger on these babies and look out. The world changes, the world erupts. A world of torque and a heap of power. That big long stroke. As soon as you increase volumetric efficiency and start getting all of that turbocharged force induction acting on that inlet, these things just come alive like you wouldn't believe. These babies ran a 0 to 100 in about 7.1 seconds and a blistering 14.9 over the quarter mile. Now a race engine inherently runs a very large bore and a short stroke. Good power from mid to top end. They want to rev. The big long stroke engines, different kettle of fish. But it doesn't matter with forced induction and turbocharging. You don't need to rev them. They make the power. And that's exactly what these things did. They made around 250 horsepower and a whole world of neck snapping torque. And that is what I'm talking about. One of the biggest problems with this car is this. Traction. There isn't any. <laughs> that was just first and second gear and feathering the throttle. This thing has got so much torque from 2,000 RPM onwards, you've got no idea. It feels like it's an eight litre engine. And that's the beauty of efficient turbocharging. Now the throttle, two and a half thousand RPM. Pulls like an absolute bat out of hell. It's almost a little frightening to be honest with you. <laughs> we know that the V8's a strong thing and they'll make good mid range to top end power, but this thing, as soon as it hits 2,800 to 3,000 RPM, the boost comes on strong. The red light in the dash indicates we've got full boost and we've actually got the methanol and water injection happening. And this thing is absolutely insane. I've got to be honest with you, I didn't expect it to be this fast. I knew it would be brisk, but I thought it might be conservative. I was totally, totally wrong. I put this thing up against our current day XR6 Falcon turbos in the modern era, and I reckon this thing would give them absolute hell. And it'd fill the rear view mirror for that whole sprint. Believe me, I'd put my money on this old girl. I really would. So what are my final thoughts on this car? I've got to be honest, absolutely blown away. For a car with early 80s technology and that good old 250 cross flow six cylinder Falcon engine, which I only ever thought was really a, a bit of a workhorse, I'm gobsmacked. The power this car creates, the torque it creates, and the drivability, and the way the thing drives and handles is just amazing. It's so sad this car didn't continue in its model range, because I think it was really, really heavily underrated. The people that put all the work into it did an absolutely spectacular job. A credit to everyone involved.
Thanks for watching and we'd really appreciate it if you'd like and comment on this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell because there's a lot more content coming your way.